So, what are we looking at in strengthening with side kick? Well, we're definitely working on strengthening um, our core control a lot more with that exercise than the others because we have a smaller base of support. Good, so smaller base of support, more challenging to the core control, great. What else are we working in the leg movement itself? The hip flexors and the extensors. Well, we're really working, so in your sideline position, you're having to maintain the weight of your leg up against gravity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the muscles that are on the outside of the hip, your tensor fasciolata, your gluteus medius, all of these hip A, B doctors mm -hmm. are going to be working harder. Bits of your gluteus is going to be working as well. So think about a squat. So a lot of you wrote mm -hmm. about sit to stand mm -hmm. and squat in your written assignment. Were those muscles important at all in your mm -hmm. sit to stand and your squat? Absolutely. Absolutely. And what do they do in the squat? They're not flexing you at the hip or extending you at the hip, but they're doing what? Stabilizing. Stabilizing. Great. Good job, Suzanne. So, could that not be important for the half squat as well? Absolutely. There we go. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we got that rationale. So you know what that means? That means you write down your list of exercises and you keep going back and taking a look. <coughs> because there's going to be more and more, right, as we go on. Yeah, great. Good job, good job. Okay, this is the problem solving that I want to see. Excellent. All right, so now we're going to move on to, um, to our reformer. We haven't gone through that yet. And we'd say, okay, so we're looking at our lower extremity strength and control. And Suzanne did a beautiful job of focusing in on this control piece with side kick. So she gets extra gold stars right on her forehead. Okay. So our footwork, what do we think about that? In light of how we're, we just talked about um, strengthening the lower extremity strength and control. Strength and control. What are some of the things that we really look for in footwork on the reformer, or what is some of the really great information that it can give you as an instructor, as you're looking at somebody's feet, and you're looking at how that second toe orients to that kneecap, and how that kneecap orients you to the hip. You can see weakness in their abduction or adduction because their feet will turn in or out because mm -hmm. of that. So we're going back to that control issue, right? Mm -hmm. Strength and control. Having the strength to control, but also having the proprioceptive awareness mm -hmm. to control, knowing what it feels like. Okay, great. So, I think we're going to keep footwork, yes? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's really important. Um, what about feet and straps? I think that definitely, especially if you do things like frog. Frog. Really frog, really right. So, so Tana brings up a really good point about frog, that that's going to be that full knee flexion. Can you maintain that pelvis in neutral in the full knee flexion? And what we, what we see really commonly or what have you felt in your bodies when you've practiced it about keeping that pelvis in place when those knees are all the way in? I've seen, observing that people tuck under a lot, it makes them tuck under. Right. In. So that is a lack of ability to... Stabilize that neutral spine. And control. to... Control your pelvis. Uh, control. And disassociate your hips. You got it. There we go. <laughs> so, so it's satisfying that. then our need to disassociate at the hips and also to strengthen and create that control around the hips now with a lot less feedback or stability that's provided by the foot bar. So the foot bar is creating that closed chain environment that is going to be more akin to the actual movement that was being tested in the fitness screen. So always going back to that. So your, your footwork is gonna be more towards a familiar, more towards it, but not all the way there, because you still have, you're, you're looking at the ceiling. You're not in a familiar orientation to gravity. So from the orientation to the task itself, it's foreign, but it's a closed chain action. So we're getting there. It's a great place, again, to re-educate, because you're taking away the reference points that tend to keep those 
faulty movement patterns. That's proprioception so, too. It and your proprioception, mm -hmm. right? It gives you a lot more okay. feedback. So there's a lot of things that can a lot of things that can happen with feet and straps. You can see people's legs going all wonky. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot of asymmetry in the placement of their legs, and this helps them to learn then that that alignment and create the strength that we need. All right, supine abdominal series. Are we going to take the argument on that? Are we going to take that rationale? I would say that you're really stretching it with this one because the only thing it would really work with the other one was with um, the when we were doing the the half uh, squat. The well, when we were doing the coordination. Right, we the coordination. Really so we said and we did the coordination right for the, the disassociation. Leg. Right, and and what's key about this about it not strengthening the legs? What's gonna what's gonna help you make your decision? So I talked about the foot bar being closed chain. There's no it doesn't, bending. Well, it, there's there it, there's no chain. It's an open chain. It's, it's an open chain. Very good. Mm -hmm. It's an open chain, and that's the way I want you guys to be thinking mm -hmm. about this. You guys are gonna have to know closed chain, open chain. Pseudo closed chain, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Just make sure we keep going back to these things. It's going to help you. You guys are already studying for your exam now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're not going to take that one. It doesn't get a star to move down to our full squat. It doesn't get a left sided star. Okay, seated foot, which just makes me think of Dr. Seuss on the beaches, you know, there's stars on their bellies. Okay, seated footwork. Sorry, I digress. Seated footwork. What are we thinking about that guy? Oh, I think that's a great one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good one. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the benefits of that? Just for choosing it, just for, for even to help you as you're working with a client. What's the benefit of that? You're getting closer to the actual movement itself because you're bringing them upright with mm -hmm. their spine mm -hmm. and the stability there. So they're